Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electro Maker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and lovely. Uh, as you can probably hear, my voice is much better. And it's a good thing because we have a bumper show of uh, projects this week along with some very cool news and a couple of very cool new products. And, of course, we will be having the Mystery Box competition. So let's get on with the show. So the beginning section of this show is going to be several projects of different types, but just before we get into that, last week I featured Waver, which is uh, presumably how you pronounce WVR, the ESP32 powered audio module that I was very excited about, um, and judging by the comments a lot of you were too. Now as I mentioned last week, I covered it before I realised that the Kickstarter was over and therefore it wasn't available. That now has changed. And what has changed is Waver doesn't just have a Kickstarter page now, they also have their own website, which is wvr.cctv.fm, though I will of course link that in the description, and under the Buy tab you can get all the different variations of Waver. Um, and uh, uh, if you're wondering what all these different variations are, that is all listed further down the Kickstarter page with uh, descriptions of what all the different things are, all of which are very, very exciting. Anyway, I wanted to get on with the show, but I did want to cover the fact uh, that we can get Waver now, as so many of you asked about it, um, and I very much doubt it's the last you're going to hear of this board on this show. So moving on to the project, um, this week uh, there is going to be a Pi Pico video, but I tried to have a week where we sort of maybe avoided some Pi Pico stuff. I understand that it is the new hotness, but by the same token we've been severely neglecting Arduino, and it's been a while since we've had any 3D printing on the show, so let's start with that. Now I am a big fan of print in place 3D printing, whether it is FDM or resin, whenever it works it's so satisfying. And if you're not familiar with what that is, that's when you print something which has joints and things as one piece in such a way that when you break it off the plate or move it around a little bit, the tiny little supports between them break and it will move as, as if it was lots of separate pieces put together. Um, and if you don't quite get what I mean by that, this is what I mean. That's printed as one piece, but look, it's, autom it's all already loose and it's a very satisfying thing. And the fact that this is a giant isopod is pretty cool because because it's, uh, I don't know, I think isopods are the coolest, anything that's 300 and odd million, 300 and odd million years old, is that right? 300? Have I, am I out by a factor? Is it 30 million? Who knows? Anyway, um, giant isopod, fantastic 3D print, and uh, this is by uh, user itbefred on Reddit, although if you look down in the comments on the Reddit thread, um, there is the link to the all-important thingiverse, um, and if you have a 3D printer, um, this is possibly the coolest thing that you could put it to use doing this week, and needless to say, I am uh, in the process of, uh, uh, well, when I've got the show finished, I will be digging out one of the team um, and giving this a go, and maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll have to take up permanent residence on this wall back here which has been sparse so far. Moving over to the Arduino subreddit and a project that uh, combines so many things that I think are fantastic, and I'm aware I say that a lot. But first, look at this thing. Um, I love this aesthetic of uh, everything connected together using wires, um, and I don't know what it's called. I think it has a specific name. But essentially, this is an Arduino with an OLED screen, um, a battery with a battery uh, uh, power charge pack controller, and an accelerometer on the top. And as you can see, as it's moved around, the accelerometer angle changes the angle of the wireframe teapot. But there's a little bit more at play here, I think, because it's no coincidence that it is a teapot here, uh, because the first ever uh, realistic animation of a teapot was the Utah uh, teapot. And if, any, if you've studied animation or anything like that at any point, it's something that you will know about. It's, it's almost like a meme in animation that it shows up in all kinds of places. Um, and, uh, and there is, uh, I, I, just as I was seeing this and was heading to the comments to see if anyone had mentioned the Utah teapot, um, not only is it mentioned somewhere in here, uh, there is a link to the fantastic Tom Scott video that explains all of it. Uh, that said, I'm not seeing it now. Maybe a lot more people have commented on this since I was there. Um, now, uh, oh, luckily, I landed exactly where I wanted to. Um, this blog on Ada uh, Fruit does not teach you how to make exactly this, but it does teach you how to make a wireframe cube using MicroPython on an OLED display. In fact, this comment section answers a question I've asked myself, which is, where have I seen that style of making things with wires before? And there's actually a link to the Twitter account for uh, Mohit Biote, I'm going to pronounce that terribly, I apologise, who has made many of these beautiful things. Um, I am very much a fan of this. Uh, so yes, um, I will leave a link to this Reddit uh, thread in the description because everything you need to know is in there, along with the initial video of said teapot. Um, but yeah, what a, what a lovely project. Up next, soldering irons. Now, 
Uh, everyone has a different taste in them. I personally am quite a fan of these little uh, Saint Smart removable ones. Uh, I believe this one is a 24 volt one, but you can also get those uh, power delivery ones which work via USB-C. Very fancy, very nice, not that expensive. However, it cannot be denied that in the world of soldering, Hakko is a massive name. But Hakko irons are expensive, so why not build your own Hakko-like digital soldering station? And that is exactly why, what ASCAS has made on Instructables. Now, I've seen a few digital soldering irons on Instructables and various other websites, um, uh, but this is the first that I've seen that really seems to be like the real deal. It uses a PID controller or PID controller, depending on how you want to say it, to regulate the temperature. Um, and PID controllers are those uh, feedback loops that allow a system to self-correct. If you've ever seen a self-balancing robot and uh, wondered how they do it, well, behind the scenes, there is a PID controller, which is taking sensor readings from an accelerometer and then feeding those readings into the uh, motors underneath in such a way that it stays balancing. Because if you just try to say, if it's tilting this way, move this way, it would be jerky, it would be all over the place, it would fall over. It has to do it smoothly and it has to do it in a way that is safe. And the same is absolutely true of regulating the temperature on a soldering iron, if not more so, perhaps. Um, and this, yeah, this tutorial is very detailed. It doesn't just take you through how to make it. It goes through the rationale of uh, making it. It shows the uh, quite beautiful white PCB um, that was designed for this project, um, which the maker is selling, by the way, if you would like to support them. Uh, this little PCB is for sale in a link somewhere down here, uh, further down in the tutorial. I can't remember exactly where I read it. Ah, right here, buy my PCB link. But of course, uh, you can get the Proteus Gerber and Printables files to make it yourself as well if you would like. The tutorial is very impressive and very detailed. It takes you through everything that you need to know. It explains each element of it and it tells you even things like how to calibrate the buck converter to get the right uh, voltage for the uh, nano without frying it and how to make a 3D printed in enclosure. All of these things are incredible, but the most incredible thing about it is priced up as, and it is priced up in the Instructables, if you already have a power supply that will power it, this only costs $7 to build. I would argue that even if you do not need a soldering iron and you have one of your own, this is so cheap that this is weekend project money. And if you know someone that doesn't have an iron and you want to give them a nice fancy digital one to get started with, then, well, why don't you make it? Regular viewer Jeff Wharton left a comment on last week's video about the Arduino Lo-Fi Orchestra, thinking it might be something we'd be interested in, and it absolutely is. Now, unfortunately, the comment is lost to time, or more accurately, uh, YouTube. I think they're trying to protect us by not letting comments be in the comment section, but never mind, because uh, we got the link and I'm going to show it to you right now. Now, the Lo-Fi Guide to the Orchestra, as this project is called, um, is not so much a single project as it is a culmination uh, and a good way to show off the many, many fantastic projects of the DIY Electro Music WordPress blog. I warn you, this blog is a time sink of the most wonderful kind because, as you may have guessed, it is uh, combining lovely things like microcontrollers and various different uh, small circuits into music-making devices right up my street. Now, needless to say, this video goes on to show off many other um, fantastic uh, microcontroller-based devices for creating music, basically showing off most of the projects from this blog. Um, and I think it is just a wonderful thing, and I'm very glad that you sent this through to us, Jeff. Thank you uh, for uh, making me aware of both this video, which is a joy in and of itself, uh, this blog post that accompanies it, and everything else on the DIY Electro Music uh, blog. I will be leaving a link to it in the description. Um, as I said, my only, uh, my only thing to mind is that this is a this is going to be a time sink for me um it is a fantastic blog and what a wonderful idea what a simple and fantastic way to show what you've been making um and yeah ah i just love it up next a project on the electromaker website by maker at play and this is an esp32 powered spotify player that uses rfid tags and plays through an alexa dot speaker now, saying it like that doesn't really do it justice because, look, this thing is a real thing of beauty. Really nicely built, made of a maple and walnut, I think it says somewhere here. Walnut and birdsea maple case. Um, but what is going on here? Well, um, the RFID tags are stuck to actual CD cases. I don't know if you're like me, I have boxes of CDs because I used to collect CDs when I was young because that was the way I listened to music. Now, if I'm being honest, I don't think I own anything with a CD drive in it. It's all gone digital. And this allows those CDs to have a second lease of life. 
The uh, RFID tag in the bottom of the CD case uh, triggers the RFID reader. The ESP32 then makes a request to Spotify for whatever that album is, and if it exists, it will play it out of the Echo Dot, which is housed in the Birch and Maple box. I said Birch, it's Walnut and Maple, isn't it? It's Walnut and Maple. Um, there are a number of videos that take you through every aspect of making this, uh, which is on the Maker at Play YouTube channel. Um, and uh, yes, uh, it is uh, just, just a great project. Uh, I really like it. Um, I'm very familiar with these RFID reader uh, boards. Um, I've written tutorials on them in the past. Um, if you ever wanted to get into RFID, um, this is the ubiquitous one uh, that you can get for very, very little. They're in most Arduino starter kits. Um, and I, and I'd, I'd suggest kind of getting a few example projects and messing around with it. Um, it's not quite as uh, terrible terrifying as it may seem from the outside. These have got some fantastic libraries that abstract away all of the SPI stuff. Um, and yeah, what a fantastic project. Um, and what a nice way to give a new lease of life to the many, many CDs um, that, much like in my life, uh, were being left at the wayside until now. Now, while I said this is going to be a more Pi Pico free show, at least just for this week, and we aren't getting away from the RP2040 so easily because Pimeroni, who have made a whole swathe of uh, RP2040 based boards, which we'll be looking at later in the show, um, have just put out the Tiny2040. And Learn Embedded Systems, a YouTube channel we've featured before, um, uh, is going to be doing a series of videos on the tw uh, Tiny2040. Now, this is just the introductory video. This is just talking about the hardware, um, talking about the ways that this might differ from the Pi Pico, apart from the obvious size and number of pins, although you will be surprised. Um, if I remember correctly, the Tiny2040 actually exposes more analog inputs or something like that than the Pi Pico. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, go and watch the video. He knows a lot more about it than I do. Um, but I wanted to mention that that's the case, partially because we're going to be talking about the other Pimeroni boards today and partially because I'm a big fan of the way Learn Embedded Systems teaches. Oh yes! Mystery box competition. So if you're not familiar with the mystery box competition, well, it's a box of mystery and I give something away from the mystery box every week. So far we've given away a wide range of different development boards and add-ons and peripherals. A lot of them are somewhat obscure and not your, like your average Arduinos or Raspberry Pis, although we've given away a Teensy and a few things like that as well too. Um, and yeah, basically I reach my hand into said box um, and I grab a box from the box and I pull out the box and this is a box from Texas Instruments. Simple Link Dual Band CC1350. Well, Dual Band makes me think uh, wireless communication. Literally the next word... <laughs> <laughs> Literally the next word on the box was wireless. Um, should have perhaps kept reading. Wireless MCU Launchpad Development Kit. Thank you for choosing Texas Instruments. Has this one been opened before? Ooh, someone's already had a little peek at this, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have a wee peek myself. Ooh. Okay, so clearly this is a Texas Instruments Evaluation Board, um, but I don't know much about it, so I'm gonna look it up and I'll give you a closer look in a moment. So I've looked it up quickly and I was just thinking, rather than me trying to hold it out to the camera, which wouldn't work now because as you may have noticed, the setup here is slightly different and the light is now, uh, yeah, it gets, it gets dark. I thought, why not, why not set up another camera on the desk, huh? Yeah. You see, we're really, uh, we're really breaking out the technology here. This, this USB webcam, <laughs> really breaking out the technology here. No, um, I thought this might be quite a nice way to show you the board. I have no idea if that's in focus. Let me make it big for you. There we are. So this is the Texas Instruments CC1350 launchpad, as you can see there. Um, and it is a microcontroller, which has a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M3 processor on it, along with a Bluetooth Low Energy Radio. Um, and let, let me just read it for you. The Simple Link CC1350 Wireless Microcontroller Launchpad Development Kit combines a sub-1 gigahertz, a sub-1, one, one, what? A sub-1 gigahertz with a Bluetooth Low Energy Radio for the ultimate combination of easy mobile phone integration with long-range connectivity including a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M3 processor on a single chip. And this information I am reading to you is from the Texas Instruments website, uh, unsurprisingly. And uh, this is the SimpleLink Dualband CC1350 Wireless MCU Launchpad Development Kit, uh, right here. Um, I had a quick look up at this, as mentioned, a 32-bit ARM Cortex chip with a lot of wireless stuff built in. Uh, the SDK user's guide for this is, is fantastic. I've had a very quick kind of skim through, but it's, uh, it's really good. And I, I noticed something in this that I did not know. Um, I always thought that the um, IDE that uh, TI provide, they have their own IDE called Code Composer Studio, there it is. Um, I always thought you had to pay for that, and apparently you do not. You haven't had to since 2015. Um, so yeah, you can uh, uh, you can set it up using uh, Code Composer Studio, and of course you can use GCC as well if you'd like to do it that way. Um, but yes, anyway, enough waffle from me. Uh, we have a prize. It's here on camera number two. Fancy. But now we need a prize winner. 
And this week's winner is Mudhen, who was one of the several people who commented about the lovely little ESP32 audio boards we featured in last week's show. Um, we will be uh, telling you how you can get your hands on those, by the way. I've been in touch with the guy whose Kickstarter it is, um, and uh, he's organising some kind of email or PayPal transactional way of doing that. As soon as I have the proper details, I will make sure that they are listed in the comments of the show. Oh, some way or other, we will make sure that everyone that's asked about it knows. Anyway, congratulations, Mudhen. This prize will be on its way to you as soon as you get in touch with us, and we get in touch with you and the addresses and the things. Um, as always, uh, we appreciate your comments, whether or not you want to win things, but any anyone who comments on our video is automatically put into the mystery box competition anyway, so it's sort of like win, win, win. Uh, I guess. Let's get on with the show. We are going to close out this week's show with a few bits of news and some new products, um, but we're starting with The Secret Life of Machines. Now, um, if you're not familiar, this is a show that was on British television on Channel 4 in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, I suspect I must have seen reruns of it because I think it was a little bit older uh, than that when I first came across it, but it is a, a show I have such fond memories of. It was a fantastic show um, that looked into different kinds of machinery, how they worked, had some fantastic animation in it, and it's something that you should definitely check out. Um, now, The Secret Life of Machines is, in essence, back... And by that, what I mean is that Tim Hunkin, who is a fantastic engineer and uh, creator and the host of the original Secret Life of Machines, is back with a new series on YouTube called The Secret Life of Components. Now, uh, this is just the kind of teaser for it. As it says, it's premiering on March 4th. And uh, depending on when you're watching this, um, it's going to be premier premiering uh, not long after this uh, video goes live. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's it's just... I. I I'm very, very excited about this. Um, I, as I said, I have incredibly fond memories of the original Secret Life of Machines, um, and uh, this uh, promises to be a fantastic educational resource um, and just a fantastic view into the workshop of Tim Hunkin, who has never stopped creating wonderful things. Now, I've moved myself a little bit down and out of the way because, I, of course, I wanted to let this preview video play, but I also wanted to point out that the Secret Life of Machines episodes are now on YouTube in their full, uh, in their entirety. Um, and uh, I suggest if you haven't seen it, if you somehow passed it by, or if maybe you're not from the UK and you're not familiar with it, um, to watch those episodes because they are fantastic. Um, uh, they're dated now, of course, but that doesn't stop them being just wonderful. Um, and yeah, the Secret Life of Components, I have no reason to think isn't going to be equally wonderful just simply because Tim Hunkin is just, yeah, uh, just a fantastic mind, a fantastic engineer, uh, a wonderful creator um, and a wonderful explainer of things. So I am very, very excited about this. I am very much looking forward to it. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, just what a wonderful, what a wonderful thing. Uh, uh, big switch. I'm already excited about the big switch. Ah, yeah, this is going to be great. Moving over now to a new laptop that will be coming soon called Framework. Now, uh, this is a modular, repairable, upgradable laptop. Um, and there have been a few sort of like hobby laptops like this. If you remember the MTN Reform, which was uh, on Crowd Supply, which was, uh, again, a completely open hardware project laptop. Um, and this has some similarities, although it promises to be uh, somewhat of a more full-fledged laptop um, capable of running various operating systems. Um, but there's a few notable features about it, one of which I, I think is so inventive. So Framework is a laptop, as it says, upgradable, repairable, and 100% yours. Um, it has a regular laptop form factor, um, and uh, there's a, quite a nice video here showing the uh, ideology behind it. Um, uh, but yeah, as it says here, it's light, it has a 13.5-inch screen, um, it can have up to 11th, 11th gen Intel Core processors, which is significantly more powerful than any of these uh, sort of put-together customizable laptops I've seen. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's a few things about it that I find interesting, but this I think is the my favorite part. Now, um, a lot of laptops only have uh, one or two USB-C ports now. Um, and in essence, this is the same because, I mean, these look like USB-C connectors on the back. But the fact that they sit flush with the body of the laptop and are hot swappable like that is such a nice little touch. Um, I completely understand if you think that looks a bit gimmicky, but I, I just think that's quite inventive. I've never seen anything quite like it. So I'll leave a link to it in the description. You can read the splash page for it. Uh, this isn't a funding website thing. Um, this is, uh, they're going to be selling it directly as far as I can tell. And there's no price or anything like that right now. It's only just been announced. And you can, of course, add your email if you want to get more news about it. But I thought it was definitely notable, worth covering. And yeah, I'll be following this one closely. Moving over to the Raspberry Pi blog, and they are uh, celebrating Pi Day this year, as they always do. Raspberry Pi, Pi Day, fits together rather nicely. But this year they're doing something a little bit different. They are having a fundraising drive uh, for Pi Day. And the, the fundraising drive is essentially to support the Raspberry Pi Foundation um, to do even more educational uh, things. Be that uh, provide educational materials for educators, 
provide hardware to kids or anyone else who is uh, learning using those materials. Um, and uh, I think at this stage, I don't really need to say that the Raspberry Pi Foundation have put a lot of effort into making uh, this an open platform that anyone can learn from. And uh, I think this is a very, very good way of raising a little bit more money to do exactly that. And uh, the link in the first paragraph goes to this donation page where you can make a one-time or monthly donation. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I thoroughly support the way Raspberry Pi approaches this. Um, uh, I know of several uh, educators in the UK who have uh, received quite a high level of support through Raspberry Pi Foundation and affiliates in terms of getting this kind of education into classrooms. I uh, know someone personally who is a teacher in a fairly low income area um, who is basically basically being able to start their own uh, coding club at their school simply because of the fact that there are people who are buying Raspberry Pi products and now donating to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, I will leave a link to this blog post in the description. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Pi Day is coming up soon and this is a really, really good way to celebrate it. Now, in terms of new-ish products, uh, Pimeroni uh, were one of the many companies that announced that they were going to be putting out boards based on the RP2040 a microcontroller, the Raspberry Pi's new custom silicon chip. And of course, the Pi Pico has been the big news recently. Um, and uh, I mentioned that there were going to be other boards from Pimeroni at the time. Didn't really look into it. Um, and I feel like it's worth coming back to because they're really putting out a plethora of really interesting stuff. Like the Tiny2040, for example, that we mentioned earlier in the show, that Learn Embedded Systems will be doing a series on. Um, and the Pico system, which I did briefly talk about, which is another handheld uh, gaming system, but uh, instead of having uh, an ESP32 inside it or in having some kind of Arduino, uh, Arduino chip inside it, it is an RP2040 once again. And there are a number of other nice things like this little macro pad and there is a, a Pi Pico audio pack which of course is something I'm interested in seeing. Um, I'm assuming it is a nice little DAC hat for the Pi Pico and the display pack which I think we have showed in a project before that someone's already made a game run on this. Um, and then this nice LED matrix as well. Um, there's, yeah, there's just a load of things that Pimeroni are putting out about it. Um, and uh, I think it's worth having a look at because uh, while we're not in any particular holiday season right now, uh, these seem like perfect gifts. In the same way that you might give someone an Arduino starter kit, um, these Pi Pico kits look very, very fun indeed. And ooh, a cute, squishy silicone keypad. Ooh, I like that. But yes, this isn't meant to be an advert specifically for Pimeroni, but I did want to mention that they have a massive plethora of very interesting boards on the way. Um, and very briefly mention that Pimeroni is one of the people that we stock in the Electromaker store. And our last piece of news today is that the NXP Hackathon 2021 is now live. This is a competition that Electromaker are putting on with NXP um, and the idea is like many other Electromaker contests. Um, you can get free hardware uh, for making your project. All you need to do is create an account and pitch your idea. Um, again, as with other contests, there are cash prizes to be won. Out of the €2,000 prize pool, the winner will win €1,000. Second and third place will win €500 Euros each. But um, one of the things that I think some people might miss when it comes to these contests on Electromaker is that uh, you can get the hardware for doing the contest by simply registering for an account and pitching what you think you could do with this hardware. Um, the hackathon is a very open concept. You can read the page for exactly what that means. But basically, you can you can build anything. Um, and so, yes, we have these two fantastic uh, IMX-RT uh, crossover boards. I've played with both of them, actually, the uh, RT-1020 uh, and the RT-1010. They're both uh, development board kits. And there is a, a bunch of different hats for things like temperature sensing and running stepper motors. And uh, I think there's a precision altimeter is one of them as well. Um, there is a video made by myself, which takes you through this as well, which you can find on this page. But yes, uh, this uh, hackathon is now live. And if you're interested, uh, go and register. Uh, come up with an idea and you will have several months to make it and later on there will be uh, prizes given out and uh, yeah if you do decide to take part best of luck i'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with that was our show for this week thank you so much for joining me we will be back next week with more projects more mystery box more everything uh, some funding website things hopefully i know we didn't have much time for that today um and yeah uh, as always i just hope you are having a good week let me know if you're getting up to anything interesting in the comment section below and uh, of course as i like to remind you occasionally all that youtube nonsense of liking and subscribing and clicking bells and all of that stuff will help us too but for now i hope you are having a fun creative and safe week take care